Here are six awesome special effects you can create using just Lightroom, no Photoshop needed. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw files from the description of this video. And now let's jump right into it. You can create autumn foliage in Lightroom. All you need to do is to make use of HSL and calibration adjustments. First, let's head into the HSL panel. The most important setting you want to change is under the Hue tab. Right now we do have some green spring foliage on those trees. To change that, we can manipulate green, yellow and orange hue to change that. Let's bring down the green hue. Taking a closer look at the foliage, you can see it's slightly shifting more towards the yellow tones. However, that's not enough. So next up, let's also bring down the yellow hue. And as we bring down the slider, you can see some bigger changes going on on the trees. And right at this point, we do get some very good looking autumn tones. We can further improve this effect by playing around with the orange hue. But instead of going down, which would turn parts of the trees more into a red color tone, we want to bring it up, giving us a more natural autumn look. Okay, that's a pretty good start, but we are not done yet. We can further tweak things by adjusting saturation and luminance. First, I want to start with the saturation. At the moment, the colors do look a little bit weak. So to change that, I want to bring up the yellow saturation. And let's also bring up the green saturation. At this point, we do get kind of overwhelmed by the colors. I do want to try and fix it by bringing down the orange saturation. And still the colors are very saturated, but they look kind of unnatural. So we can balance things a little more by heading into the luminance tab and working on the brightness of each color tone. I want to bring up the yellow luminance to make the yellow tones brighter and just give us some more natural looking colors on the foliage. We can also do the same with the green luminance and with the orange luminance. So that looks pretty good already. You can see deactivating the HSL settings. We have changed the spring foliage quite dramatically to make it look like an autumn scene. However, we can tweak things further. Let's collapse the HSL panel and go down into the calibration tab. Here, the most important slider is the blue primary hue and saturation. Let me bring down the blue primary hue just a little bit and you can see how the foliage tones are shifting more towards a warmer color. However, I would suggest to not go too far because this will also change the blue tones of the sky and make them look like a very strange cyan color tone. So I think right about here is a good spot for the hue. We can make the colors pop a little more by bringing up the saturation. And just like that, we did get some awesome autumn foliage. For tip number two, let's recreate the polarization effect. This means we want to make the blue part of the sky darker. And thus we are giving the whole image a lot more contrast. For that, we want to head into the masking panel. Let's create a new mask and choose a color range mask. With the eyedrop active, click in the blue part of the sky. You can see we are getting a pretty good selection, but still there are a few clouds selected as well. So I want to make use of that refine tool, bringing it a little further down so we can separate the clouds from the blue part of the sky. For this effect, we don't want to have the polarization effect right there on the brighter areas of the sky around the sun. So I'm going to subtract this area. For that, hit the subtract button and you can either go with a linear gradient or the radial gradient. In this case, let me choose a radial gradient and I'm just going to create one right around the sun. And once we have set up our mask, all we need to do is to bring down the exposure. And just like that, we are recreating the polarization effect. If you want, you can even create a deeper blue by bringing down the temperature and further dropping the blacks. With tip number three, I'll show you how to add autumn glow to your images with just two sliders. For this effect, you want to head into the basic tab. Under the present settings, you'll have clarity and dehaze. These are the two sliders most important to create autumn glow. However, we don't want to increase those two, but we want to decrease those two. 
what this means for this image. I'm going to bring down the clarity quite a bit, making the overall image a lot softer. And I'm simply doing the same with the dehaze. And the further you bring it down, the softer your image will get. And this creates a very subtle and very nice looking autumn glow effect. However, it's very important to keep in mind, bringing down things like dehaze will make the overall image a lot brighter and you might have to fix an overexposure problem. Also, bringing down the dehaze will reduce the saturation of your image slightly, so you want to counter that as well. With tip number four, let's create bouquet balls on your images with a bunch of masks. That's right, you can create artificial bouquet balls in Lightroom. For that, head into the masking panel. And what we want to do is to create a new mask. Usually those very famous bouquet balls are some kind of round shape. So we want to create a radial gradient and just create a nice big one like this somewhere random in the image. Those bouquet balls are usually brighter than the surrounding area. So to create those, we want to bring up the blacks. At this point, you don't see much of this effect. That's because the feather of the radial gradient is set to 100. We want to bring it down. However, setting it to zero makes it look very, very unnatural with a sharp edge like this. So what we want to do is to go back to our radial gradient and we want to set the feather to something around six. This gives us a much more realistic effect as you can see. However, we can tweak it a little more. In this mask, I also want to increase the temperature slightly, giving this bouquet ball some more color. And I even think we can bring up the exposure to really make it pop. Let's bring it up a notch like this. Okay, let's take a look at it. This looks pretty good. Now we can make use of this mask and just add a bunch more radial gradients to it. So with the exact same feather and on the exact same mask, I'm going to draw a few more of those radial gradients. And I'm just varying in size here to create a very realistic looking effect. This looks pretty good, right? So we can make it even more realistic. Go back to the bouquet ball mask. And now instead of adding another radial gradient, we want to subtract a linear gradient. And now I'm going to take away part of the bouquet just by subtracting a linear gradient from those balls like this. And just like that, we get some really natural looking bouquet balls. Tip number five, let's add some artificial fog. Again, we want to rely on masking for this effect. So again, go ahead, open up the masking panel and create a new mask. Again, we are going to make use of a radial gradient and let's make it very large and thin like this. I'm going to make sure the center of this radial gradient lies outside of the image, just like this. So we do get the widest part right there. And again, we want to increase the feather all the way up. And with this radial gradient set up, all we need to do is bring down the dehaze. We want to drop it quite dramatically here. At the moment, this does not really look that natural to me, so we can fix it by adjusting this radial gradient. I want to make it a little thicker, and I also want to make it a little wider. And I do want to place the brightest part just on the edge of this image. And what I want to do next is to just create a few more radial gradients, kind of layering fog over each other like this. Again, I'm just bringing down the dehaze and I'm always playing around with the amount of dehaze to get a more natural random looking result. Just like with the bouquet, I can also go add another radial gradient to this exact mask. Just place some fog on the other side. This way I am continuing working my way through the image to add fog. It's just important to keep in mind you cannot do this using a single radial gradient. You want to stack multiple ones over each other. We could even use a linear gradient for the very near foreground, tilt it a little bit, and in here just again bring down the dehaze like that. All right, that is looking really cool. 
So without the artificial fog and here is the image with it added with just a bunch of masks. And finally my favorite effect adding glowing spots. All you need to do is again make use of some masks. So let's create a new one. Again we want to make use of the radial gradient. I'm going to create a rather thin and white one to fit the shape of that light in the background right here. But I'm also making sure that this radial gradient is overlaying some of the darker areas like those clouds above the bright spot and the surface of the water below it. That's really important because you want the glow to kind of overspill into the darker areas. So with the radial gradient setup, all we need to do is to bring up the blacks. And you can see how this adds some very, very cool glow effect. Again, you can play around with the strength here, but if you're aiming for a strong glow effect, I would suggest to go down to the dehaze and also bring down the dehaze. Just like this, but again, keep in mind this will alter the brightness of the area and you might want to fix some overexposure in here. And also, this will reduce the saturation, so I want to counter this problem by bringing up the white balance temperature and maybe even adding a specific color using the color box right there, picking a warmer hue to fit the sunset. Perfect. You can even make this area softer by again bringing down the clarity. To make this look even better, we want to add another mask and again use a radial gradient. This time I'm going to make a different size and overlap the same area. And then just all we need to do is to bring up the blacks once more to create some variation in this glow effect. And just like this, we added some real good looking glow. This effect can not only be applied for sunset images like this, but I use it to add glow to all kind of things like windows or lights or whatever. And those were the six tips with which you can create some very cool special effects using only Lightroom. So I hope this video was helpful and interesting. If you have any tricks you want to share yourself, please let us know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.